In 1992, Damon John and his three friends started to build a brand from the streets of Queens, New York, that quickly took over the clothing market in hip hop, then the US, and established itself eventually as a global brand. For Us Bias, short for FUBU, was a brand that helped hip hop become a global lifestyle through affordable fashion. FUBU was one of the most rapidly expanding American clothing brands in the 90s, creating everything from baseball caps and sweatshirts to even semi-formal suits. Damon John, who grew up in Queens, New York, created and founded the company with three childhood friends, all of whom remain active in the company's management for a very long time. Damon, who was the CEO of FUBU, he entered the industry after getting upset with the menswear industry's lack of street style. His mom taught him to sew when he was just a child. Wool ski caps with fishing line tips were trending in the 90s and Damon observed them being sold for $20, which he thought was overpriced. He went home and sewed approximately 90 hats. He made $800 in a single day in 1992 by selling handcrafted hats for $10 each on the intersection of Jamaica Avenue. He began selling screen printed t-shirts after the hats. I went and printed up some shirts when the Rodney King riots were happening in Los Angeles with lines like, what happened to poor Rodney King? Then Mike Tyson got incarcerated and we did the whole free Mike Tyson shirts. People purchased the shirts quickly because of the emotional slogan attached to it. And he noticed this trend with his experience. He wanted to create a brand that would make people feel something. To break into the market, he and his friends sold on consignment and at large events around the Northeast. To make ends meet, he held a full-time job at Red Lobster, working on the FUBU business in between shifts. He would later say, then all of a sudden there was this amazing music. It's like what we call today a disruptive technology. It came out of the Bronx and it made its way into Queens. It was called hip hop. This music was today's Twitter. It was a way the kids were communicating about their hopes and their dreams and the plight of the community. And this music not only came with a way to talk, it came with a way to walk and a way to dress and it was engaging and I wanted to be a part of it. I started to want to become a part of this culture and we started wearing these clothes and we started hearing that these designers didn't want us wearing their stuff. One company called Timberland, they're not owned by the same owners now, but they said we don't sell our boots to drug dealers. I wasn't a drug dealer. I was a hardworking young man who was working at Red Lobster as a waiter. I didn't have enough money to go to college, so I had to get a job as a waiter and I was upset. Sensing potential in the market, Damon and his mother mortgaged their house for $100,000 to generate some startup capital. In addition to Carlton Brown, he included longtime friends Jay Alexander Martin and Keith Perrin into the business. Damon said, We said we really want to be inclusive and really proud of the people who we're selling these clothes to, so we came up with a name, FUBU, for us, by us. It was all about a culture, not about a color. They began sewing the FUBU logo onto hockey jerseys, sweatshirts, and t-shirts. They started designing t-shirts they believed would appeal to young, inner-city, urban consumers like themselves and their friends. First, they put out a couple of ads here and there in publications like Write On Magazine, and the first places where people actually bought FUBU were in Japan and Seattle. Grunge kids from Seattle and teens in Japan who loved hip-hop started buying FUBU clothes and then they started to place the apparel in various music videos. They took the same 10 shirts and placed them in videos featuring many different artists. For two years, we'd take them to an artist and then take them back and put them on other artists and became known as a huge clothing company with 10 shirts. The family home was transformed into a small factory devoted to the production of hats and rugby style t-shirts. Damon purchased six sewing machines and all the materials needed to create the FUBU clothing line, including hiring seamstresses. He rented out the rooms in his home for money and kept the clothing line going. Soon, Damon, who was then also waiting tables at Red Lobster in addition to designing the clothes, had more orders than he could fill and so he turned his energy full time into the business. During his downtime, he would visit music video sets and try to get rappers into wearing the clothing. In 1994, FUBU saw the first real expansion. That year, Damon and his partners took their designs to the Men's Apparel Guild in California an annual retail event held in Las Vegas, and unable to afford a booth at the show, sold their clothes from a hotel room. Within a couple of days with irrepressible energy and salesmanship, they made FUBU's presence felt. Every accessory and piece of clothing brought to the show had been sold, and they somehow managed to sell $400,000 worth of clothes that didn't even exist yet, which ultimately led to Damon's mother taking out a second mortgage of $100,000 on her home 
due to Damon being turned down by nearly 30 banks for a business loan. Damon's mother used the last of her money to take out an advertisement in the New York Times that said, million dollars in orders, need financing. Damon said 33 people called and 30 of them were loan sharks and one of them ended up being my partners Bruce and Norman Weisfeld. Norman was the president of Samsung's textile division and Norman said, you know what, we'll give you a distribution deal. Samsung's textiles offer to distribute FUBU's collection enabled the business to increase both production and the variety of its designs. What had begun with tie top hats and t-shirts now expanded, with Damon and a small team of designers creating jackets, baggy hip hop style pants and oversized bubble coats, all of which were emblazoned with FUBU's distinctive logo. After striking the distribution deal with Samsung, the FUBU collection was picked up by the Macy's chain of retail stores making the label more accessible nationwide. Carlton E. Brown said, For me, the most memorable moment was setting up our first retail store, Monago Bay in Jamaica, Queens. Once I saw our goods on a T-Rack and saw the people buy what we had created, I knew there was no stopping us. Since the company's inception, FUBU had maintained a close relationship with the hip-hop industry, both in terms of its designs it produced and the advertising that helped distribute it with rappers wearing it. Damon created the slogan for us by us to show people that he was dedicated to satisfying the fashion needs of young black American men. FUBU took full advantage of the athletes and rappers and used them in their advertising. Beyonce, Will Smith were among the artists to wear FUBU in music videos. In an interview, co-founder Keith Perrin said, First it started with Brand Nubian in one of their videos. Then Old Dirty Bastard wore it in a Mariah Carey video. Then Busta Rhymes wore it on one of his videos and LL Cool J decided to wear FUBU on the Hey Lover video with Boys to Men. Damon told Tim Ferriss in a 2011 interview, Our product was front and center on the biggest and most influential personalities for our core consumers. This kind of advertising was especially important for FUBU, which didn't have a lot of money to spend on advertising. After FUBU's breakthrough at the Magic Show in Las Vegas, the company soon began working with LL Cool J, who wore some FUBU gear at his concert and thereafter he became a company spokesperson, giving the small label a high profile exposure. In 1997, LL Cool J starred in a commercial for Gap in which he wore a FUBU hat and incorporated the phrase for us by us into his rap lyrics. Damon said, LL didn't feel good about how Gap approached him. He says for us by us on the low in the commercial. They spent $30 million basically airing a FUBU commercial for five weeks. The commercial's production team was unaware of the meaning behind LL's FUBU references until the advertisement aired. The subsequent controversy proved to be a big publicity boost for both companies by simultaneously establishing FUBU in the mainstream while giving Gap some street credibility. By 1998, FUBU had peaked with sales of over $350 million. The success of the clothing line during this time can largely be attributed to rappers and R&B singers who wore their clothing in music videos. This was the style to be imitated during the time for young men of all backgrounds in the US and was known in the industry as urban streetwear. According to Lauren Goldstein of Fortune Magazine, in 1990 there were fewer than five urban booths at the Magic Show. Last August there were at least 140. The burgeoning interest in urban streetwear not only offered an increase in sales to already established designers, but created an opportunity for small businesses to fill a growing niche market. What fueled and inspired this market was rap music. She went so far as to note that urban wear companies have ridden in on the coattails and jacket backs and baseball caps and shoes of rap musicians. This mix of musical taste and fashion trends made the urban wear market huge. Damon was aware of this convergence and used it to his company's advantage. FUBU's marketing efforts began to focus on broadening the concept of urban, making it more about attitude and style and less about ethnicity and where people were born and grew up. According to Damon at the time, FUBU was a sportswear company. Calling us urban is like saying we come from the street and immediately labels us as something we don't necessarily want to be. The people who buy our clothes know that we're down. They know that we don't just make the clothes, we wear the clothes and we're a part of the culture. As rap music found a multicultural audience, so did FUBU in the mid 90s. Commenting on the company's successful marketing to America's youth, advertising director of The Source magazine, Peter Ferraro said, FUBU is no more hip-hop than The Gap. 
But by using the language of hip hop, which is the language of youth in the United States and around the world, they've had success in expanding their brand from the inner city into the suburbs. Hip hop is the one art form that has cohesion in youth culture. They have understood that hip hop gets the gear out there on the right kids. From FUBU's inception, competition was fierce, particularly from other new labels. As hip hop fashion grew in popularity with young men, so did the desire to wear clothes representative of a new urban ethos. FUBU found itself competing with brands such as Fat Farm by Russell Simmons, as well as Wu Wear, started by the Wu Tang Clan. Given the similar ties to the music industry of FUBU's competitors, it became necessary for FUBU to step up its game. FUBU began growing in popularity with names such as Dr. Dre and a young Ludacris sporting their stuff, but word of mouth was the biggest form of advertising back then, and as more people hit the streets in FUBU, the more the brand grew. Part of FUBU's contract with Samsung required the clothing company to gross at least $5 million in sales within three years. They clearly exceeded that figure in less than a year, making it possible for the company to look with confidence at its financial future. FUBU's early success made the company an appealing investment to other names in the industry, and soon FUBU formed licensing contracts that allowed its name to appear on a broad range of women's wear, accessories, and loungewear. FUBU's distribution deal with them gave the company exposure, with FUBU lines being picked up by over 100 Macy's stores and over 300 JCPenney stores across the nation. Even while FUBU went more commercial, independently owned specialty stores continued to carry the label, making FUBU strong in the hip-hop fashion industry as well. In early 1999, FUBU formed a licensing deal with Pietra Fessa Corporation, a producer of upscale former clothes, which allowed FUBU its first experiment with tailored, higher-priced men's suits. In charge of the designing of the line was Pietra Fessa, with FUBU heading up the line's sizing and form. The line included both single and double-breasted suits, tuxedos, and a quote-unquote country suit modeled after vintage British designs. Prices for the suits ranged from $395 to $1,500, and they thought that as FUBU's customer base grew older, they would enter the workplace in which formal clothing was required. FUBU's move to corner the tailored clothing market showed they had some marketing sensibility. Just as FUBU looked towards increasing its sales with tailored clothing, they realized that its core line of clothing, bubble jackets, baggy jeans, and oversized t-shirts had become quite popular with women as well. As a result, they developed a line of women's clothing called FUBU Ladies. Also during this time, FUBU's expansion plans resulted in a licensing deal in the winter of 99 with the NBA. Urban Wear took many of its style cues from the sports world and basketball, as well as vice versa, with its players in knee-length baggy shorts and loose jerseys, had a particular strong influence over the retail industry. In its deal with the NBA, FUBU created a new line called FUBU NBA, which focused on 40 pieces of sportswear from sweatshirts and pants to jerseys and headgear. Prices were anywhere from $45 to $100, and each item carried both the NBA and FUBU logos. In designing the line, particular attention was given by FUBU to the most popular teams in the NBA, the LA Lakers, the Chicago Bulls, and the New York Knicks, also three demographics that fit within FUBU, urban inner cities. In explaining FUBU's marketing approach with FUBU NBA, the company's vice president, Phil Pabon, said, Our alliance with the NBA brings a whole legitimacy to our line, not just in numbers and sales, but in that we are a true sportswear collection, whether you want to call us urban, suburban, indifferent, this opens a whole new segment of an existing market. Not only did FUBU partner with hip-hop, pop, and R&B artists, but in 2001, FUBU released a compilation album titled The Good Life. Featuring artists like Nate Dogg, LL Cool J, and Keith Murray, the album sold half a million units, costing them $5 million to make. But by 2003, FUBU really kind of faded out of the US market, keeping only its footwear division and focusing on building its business in Asia and Europe. According to Complex, FUBU's decline occurred due to its oversaturating the market. As even Damon John has publicly stated, the biggest mistake we made with the brand was buying more inventory than we needed. This was around 2001. Since then, FUBU has continued to collaborate with various brands, including Pyre Moss and Urban Outfitters. They did acquire other clothing brands like Kuji, Drunken Monkey, Heatherette, Kappa USA, and Crown Holder. 
And while the company didn't completely collapse, there wasn't much talk about bringing the clothing line back into the US. It wasn't until 2009 that Damon announced the brand would make a comeback. And in that same year, their worldwide revenues reached 200 million. So a lot of sales were happening outside of the US. In 2010, FUBU relaunched its collection in the US, rebranding itself as FB Legacy. In 2018, Puma began a collaboration with FUBU to create a number of shoes. And in March of 2019, FUBU announced a new partnership with Century 21. The FUBU.com has all new gear that still gives off the 90s hip hop vibe, but their influence is nowhere near what it was 20 plus years ago. And it's just faded ever since. Make sure to subscribe for more.